Okay, here is a grandfather clock from the floor up. You'll see a pendulum, you know, the big brass dial in the front. You'll see the brass weights, and then you'll see all those silver tubes in the back. That's those are chimes. Um, here's the clock face up to the top. It's about six and a half feet tall, has a little ornate woodwork on the top, and it has one big front door. This is a cable driven clock. You can tell because of those pulleys right there, they run on a cable that goes up inside the clock. You can see where the cable goes from the side piece in here. The weights are held onto a cable. The cable goes up inside the clock face to those wheel dials right there. The clock spools around that wheel dial. The cable goes up and down depending on if it's running or not running. The pendulum is held on in the back right here, typically by a hook. And we're going to get to those chimes from the back of the clock. First thing we're going to do is we're going to determine what type of clock box we're going to use. We have two types of styrofoam containers to hold the clock weights. This one right here, the weights are for a smaller diameter weight, um, which this clock has two smaller weights, but then it has one bigger weight. Since it has the one bigger weight, we are going to use a wine shipping container that I have here, and I've worked some of the bottleneck pieces out of the top. And we're going to put the clock weights in this particular box rather than this one based on the size. Some of the other material we're going to need is a foam block right here that has a notch cut out in it. It's about two inches thick. It's a hard foam. But with the clock, in order to get to the weights and the pendulum and these chimes, you typically start here at the door lock. Open it up and get you in. When you're dealing with brass finish on weights and a pendulum, you really need to wear a glove type material. Hold your hand out. We, we use uh, a rubber glove so that we do not get their fingerprints on the brass. It causes the fingerprints to oxidize and tarnish. Um, we take these foam blocks and they sit right, right over that pulley, just like that. One of the key things about a cable-driven clock is you have to keep tension on these cables before you take the weight off. Now we're going to wind the next one. You can see it raises up pretty good. Square it up for me. Alright, we're good. I'll take the winder out. And then he'll remove this weight off of that pulley, just like so. And then he's going to wrap that in bubble wrap and set it to the side. Hey Mark, since that one in your hand, let's take a look at the bottom of that one. Typically on most clocks, there'll be known there'll be a mark on the bottom that says left, right, or center. When taking weights off of a clock, it is also important to note left, center, and right on each weight because each pulley does something different. One pulley runs the clock, one pulley runs the quarter chime, one pulley runs the hour chime. Um, they weigh differently and they react differently inside of the clock itself. Um, you want to make sure that you have the left one for the left pulley, the center one for the center pulley, and the right one for the right pulley. And you want to know which ones those are. So when, when we label them, uh, we wrap it in the bubble wrap, and then on the outside of the bubble wrap, we write left, center, or right, depending on which weight it is. Um, that is very important to the running of a clock. Now we're going to do the last weight right now, and then we'll do the pendulum. Okay. Wind it up, 
Go there. Come there. Pull the tank chime out. Now the weights are out. I'm wrapping the last one. And then it's important to keep all pieces of the clock together. A wine shipper really works well for keeping it all in place. So we have left, right, and center. The wine cask is in place. I'm going to go ahead and put this winder in one of the bottles. And I'm also, roll that up. I'm also going to roll up some of the information. And I'm going to stick that in one of these other empty holes. Then we're going to put the top on it. See, I've cut out the tops right, right here and there, so it just rolls right on over. We might have to work that paper. We might have to work the paper into the top one. And that gets the weights, the winder, and all the equipment. We're done with the winder now. There's nothing left to wind. So we're going to seal this box up on it. And we're going to put grandfather clock weights on that. Right here in front of me. See if I can get a better look at it. You see that slotted groove right there? That's what that pin goes in. So you get the pin in there, and that's on the, that's on the and bottom he side. As, as he's taking that back panel off, the only way to get the chimes out is to bring them out the front door. And we do them one at a time, and then we're um, We'll do them uh, not necessarily individually, but we'll wrap one up a little and then wrap a second one in with it. All right. So to look at it, you're like, well, I see poles, but how do you how do you get to how do you get to that? Well, I'm going to have Mark and Russell here show you. All clocks are different, but the top of this clock is set on dowel pins. And now that gives us access to the top of the chimes. Each one of these chimes is put on with a rope around two pins. And we will take them off individually one at a time. There's usually not a hose clamp on there, but this one has hose clamps on there. Apparently the tube was splitting. Um, we're going to start with the longest one, which is going to be that one on the far side over there. And it takes two people. Russell will have to work this side of the mechanism with his fingers, getting the rope off each pin. You come straight out. The, the chimes, they go from longest to shortest. So all you really need to make sure is the right side is the short side, the long side is the left side. And then the really long one hangs on the side over there. All right, so the last thing we did is we put the key in, in the weight box with all the information in the winder. So the, the weights, the winder, all the information for the clock, and the key all in the same box. And we're going to cap that little piece with a piece of bubble wrap, shrink wrap, to hold it in place right there and then we're going to seal that box and it's good to go. Okay so we opened up a pad, set the clock in and then we folded a pad up around it, taped it off in place so that we are covered all the way to the floor, under the clock and up the back side. Now we're going to put the top piece on and then we're going to shrink wrap it. The clock is padded top to bottom. Now we're going to shrink wrap it. 
and get her ready to take outside. All right. Here's the clock. All padded and shrink wrapped. Waiting to go. Clock waits. The pendulum. A chime box for the chimes. Next thing to do is we're going to take it out, put it in the truck, take it to storage for a year or two. That's how you do a grandfather clock.